In the mid-1960s, Seattle architect Royal McClure designed a home for Gill and Ursel Ede on a property on Hunts Point, a peninsula projecting northward from the eastern shore of Lake Washington. The Ede site was a west-facing waterfront lot with a magnificent view across the lake toward Seattle. The Ede House is executed primarily in wood, meticulously and lovingly detailed, and therefore it belongs to the general body of regional domestic work of the time, as found in, for example, the contemporaneous houses of Paul Hayden Kirk, Jean Zima, or Arnie Bystrom. But the Ede House is unique in being essentially a single room, since all habitable spaces within open to and are part of a great skylit central space that the architect calls a lanai. As such, the Eid House, heretofore little known, is among the finest examples, and may even be the masterpiece, of the Northwest School of which it is a part. Royal McClure is um, uh, a native uh, from Seattle, educated at the University of Washington and Harvard, who practiced uh, with a fairly remarkable, I think, beginnings in Spokane in the early 1950s. Uh, he moved back to Seattle in the mid-60s and opened his own practice here. And this is, I think, a real seminal work for that period. The house uh, represents a plan, a concept, a usage based on the ease. The so-called lanai or big area isn't a normal feature of a typical house but it was very much used for the 32 years that the Eads had the house. I asked Gil the other day, well, how many people have you had in here? And he said, 200. Well, uh, it has simulated that very beautifully, and that was one of the, the requirements. And yet it had to be a part of the house when then just the family or just the two, Gil or herself, were uh, in the house. There's a complexity of framing of structure and yet a, a simplicity of repeat and discipline within the house. The latter is something I find to be a major interest that these two become compatible and yet all come to, together to a perception of the indoor and the outdoor aspect. It was quite easy to visualize in our design mind we had neighbors on both sides. We had a lake and a view. So it was to be a through house. In other words, a spatial throughness and visual throughness house, both downstairs and upstairs. This is a skylight through the whole width of the Lanai plan. The counters were designed not, purposely not to be railed kind of things that we'd have to keep herself away from, but uh, sort of a, an art value and a space value of how to display things. Uh, and that became an inherent theme statement of the whole house. Any room that you're in, you see, in a sense, the same room or as little of it as you want to be coupled up in any of the uh, individual items or, or core spaces. I think it's sort of a house that's 32 years old that looks pretty new. When uh, we acquired the property, it had an old beach cabin on it that had been added on and added on, and it, it turned out that we could not remodel it, which was our original intent. We then came in contact with uh, Mr. McClure through uh, friends of ours, and the um, first encounter, when he saw the property, he informed me uh, that uh, it was very important that we not destroy the site. He said it's a beautiful site, and whatever we did, he did not want any trees cut down, he did not want any dirt dug out, and I thought this was rather limiting, but uh, he was rather forceful in his argument, and so we went along with it. We wanted to use native wood and have the house made out of fir and cedar, we wanted it to have a very open type of a concept with very high ceilings if we could have them. You'll find that there is very limited privacy both visually and uh, auditorially. We wanted it oriented 
toward the lake and toward the woods and back and not toward either side of the house. We did not want it tied to any existing architectural style where it would uh, be too noticeable as being of, of a given period or of a given style, but we didn't want it so far out that we would not be able to sell it later on. Because of its location and the fact that we had four children, we wanted every room in the house to have a view in both directions to the outside. In fact, we wanted to be part of the outside as much as possible. You're really aware here of the climate and the weather and all of that, I mean, as opposed to sort of being in an artificial environment, although, I mean, you have the aspects of, of heating and cooling, you know, there's a kind of awareness of the natural environment here that you wouldn't get anywhere else. You have that ability, in a sense, almost to have the sensory experience of the storm, particularly if though it's warm enough that things can be open without the kind of... Um, physical um, inconveniences of actually getting wet or something. We were married outside on the lawn, and uh, the reception was downstairs, and we had a big black grand piano downstairs. We had trouble getting that piano down here. And it was just a beautiful, elegant, um, and yet a sense of casualness about it, because the house lends itself to the sense of casualness. And, um, it, it's a nice space to have a party in. There's a lot, a lot of different levels. People can spread out, and yet you can still be a part of the party. If you're cutting the cake, for example, at, at our wedding, people could see it all over, and, and you didn't all have to crowd around. At certain times of the day, the light will come through, and it, it creates a really neat stippling effect. And the color on the cedar changes. Sometimes it's a hot pink or an, or an orange or a yellow. And so the whole room, the whole ambiance changes with the, the light changes. This theme that we did uh, uh, floating the cabinets above the floor, mm -hmm. we've done re on repeated houses and to a fuller extent to make the house look uh, lighter and easier to clean and maintain and, and all this kind of thing, and still let the glass go down right. and, yeah. and the walls come in. That's the section of the house, and you can see, we perceive it in a sort of horizontal way in terms of the volumes, but in fact, the roof form itself is very complex. There's the center skylight section, and then these articulated gables over the two zones on the east and west, and um, I think that has a lot to do with how the light's brought into the house. This skylit section, as we have seen, is the key to the entire organization of the house and the essential element in its calm spatial drama. This unique spatial concept also affected the individual members of the family and the relationships between them. We had to respect one another, both from a sound standpoint and a sight standpoint. And I think that the uh, kids did that. I, uh, uh, and we had no great, we were unaware of uh, having much of a problem that way. In fact, one of our daughters who was here just a few minutes ago, she made the statement that uh, this was all she knew, and she didn't know that <laughs> you could. So, uh, and they were really aware of when they would go visit other people's houses that everybody didn't live this way. <laughs> the opportunity to design this house was probably the greatest experience I've had in our practice, really. Because uh, it's the one that uh, I love as, as much as the Eads do. We wanted to do a house that was siding inside and outside. Uh, fortunately, 32 years ago, we could do it with uh, three-quarter inch cedar from Canada. From a weathering standpoint, I think this house looks as new today as it did 32 years ago. I think that's very refreshing. It's a, a very simple concept. It's a platform house. It was a particular requirement of the land eye, the space below, because of the way the Eid would live, and they needed uh, room for uh, conventions and weddings and uh, uh, things that isn't apparent uh, in all houses, but had to be uh, 
not a big room set off of the side to accommodate that, but it had to be an element that was within the house. There's a quite a bit of duplication, and yet there's a very much a light of, of discipline related to each facet of it. And you'll notice that it, it's a grid problem in its magnitude uh, from uh, left to right. It uh, uh, will relate itself uh, to the whole aspect of space ver vertically. So it isn't, I've got a lower floor plan, I've got a upper floor plan, and I do something here. How does the whole thing all dovetail and hold together? Simplicity and, and discipline is quite a mindful way of analyzing a project. We have tried to take that as a philosophy of life. And uh, our in philosophy of, of life got involved in our architectural design. And uh, uh, because we tested ourselves, what is the greater thing than the practice of architecture? And of course, it's the art of, of living. <laughs>